On the coast of Oregon, on the edge of the Pacific Ocean, lies an ominous lighthouse, abandoned and covered in decay. Even before its opening, this structure was plagued by tragedy. So much tragedy, in fact, that it has been dubbed Terrible Tilly by locals. But how did this doomed lighthouse end up here? And why is it doomed anyways? Well, stay tuned, because today we discover the Tillamook Rock Lighthouse. I'm your host, Ryan Sokash, and you're watching It's History. 1.2 miles from the shore of Tillamook Head is a large piece of black volcanic rock and harsh waters just less than an acre in size. Although it probably took some imagination, in the 1870s, this small space was determined to be perfect for a lighthouse. Composed of concrete and brick, this structure measures in at 133 feet in total height. The tower alone is only 62 feet, but the light brings it up to 72. The two-story building below features an observation deck surrounding the light, but a large portion of the space here is actually dedicated to the lighthouse keeper's quarters. In total, this 45 foot by 48 foot house has eight rooms that allow the isolated keeper to live sustainably and alone on the remote island. The hallways here connect the living space with the actual lighthouse facilities, such as the signal room that formerly housed the steam boiler and the diesel generators. The lighthouse's roof at the top of the actual building includes a catwalk and railing. As the structure continues to the spotlight section, the width narrows. Then we have the very top of the lighthouse, which is an inverted cone of steel plates crowned by the lightning rod and steel sphere. Compared to other lighthouses, keepers here had expansive quarters with two stores of space. Five of the eight rooms were exclusively for living arrangements with an additional office, a living and dining room, plus a storage space. So you might ask, why was all that space needed? Well, a lighthouse keeper's responsibilities primarily revolve around maintaining and operating the lighthouse facility rather than traditional office duties. However, an office was needed as administrative tasks and record keeping were involved in their work. This included documentation, like keeping detailed records of daily activities, including weather conditions, maintenance tasks, and any noteworthy occurrences. Maintaining an inventory of supplies, equipment, and spare parts needed for the lighthouse, including ordering replacements when necessary. Correspondences were also handled in the office. This included incoming and outgoing mail or other forms of communication such as telegraphs that related to the lighthouse's operations. There was also financial administration, such as managing the budgetary aspects of the lighthouse. This included tracking expenses, processing invoices, and maintaining financial records. Finally, there was basic reporting. This included preparing regular reports on the lighthouse's condition, operations, or any incidents, issues that may have occurred. Perhaps even more important was the living room used for recreation, which is critical for anyone isolated on a rock in the middle of the ocean for months at a time. The living room was used for recreation since during the 19th century, lighthouse keepers often faced long periods of isolation and limited recreational options while stationed at a lighthouse. The nature of their work and the remote locations of many lighthouses made leisure activities very challenging. However, they found ways to occupy their time and entertain themselves, such as reading. Lighthouse keepers would often bring books, magazines, or newspapers with them to the lighthouse. Reading provided intellectual stimulation and a way to pass the time during quiet periods. Keepers also frequently wrote letters to their family and friends, keeping them updated on their experiences and seeking social connection through correspondence. Some lighthouse keepers developed hobbies, such as crafts, to keep themselves occupied. Beyond that, they may have engaged in activities such as painting, drawing, wood carving, model shipbuilding, or other forms of creative expression. Outside the lighthouse, there was fishing, which provided an opportunity to enjoy the outdoors and potentially supplement their diet. Some lighthouse keepers collected and studied specimens found in their natural environment or just observed nature. This could include seashells, rocks, plants, or other natural objects of interest. Whereas other keepers cultivated small gardens around their lighthouse stations, 
Gardening not only provided a source of fresh produce, but it also offered a therapeutic and engaging activity. Keepers were also known to play music for simple personal enjoyment, which might lead you to wonder if the conditions were so harsh and required such isolation, why was a lighthouse even needed? Tillamook Rock Lighthouse was built because the United States Congress believed that the Oregon coast was too dark and dangerous for sailors. Hence in 1878, Congress budgeted $50,000 to construct the lighthouse. Surprisingly, the rock was chosen as the lighthouse's home because there was no feasible location on the mainland, although not many were optimistic about the prospect. You see, in 1879, the first survey of the space was conducted, with surveyor S.H. Wheeler reporting reporting that construction would be nearly impossible. The second investigation found that the project needed additional funding to start. And when it started, tragedy struck immediately. The first tragedy surrounding Terrible Tilly occurred in September of 1879, when the third survey, this time conducted by the English mason John Truvis, was captured by the rapid waves of the ocean during his attempt at landing on the rock. The surveyor drowned, and his body was lost at sea. This dramatic event paused the lighthouse's construction, which was still in its infancy. The public knew of this tragic death, so few workers were willing to be employed on the project. Eventually, a replacement named Charles A. Ballantyne was found and hired. He was completely aware of the previous tragic event. The remainder of the lighthouse's construction went relatively smooth until another tragedy struck the coast 18 days before the opening of the lighthouse. This time, fog clouded the Oregon sky and heavy wind made travel risky. Unfortunately, it was also around this time that the Japanese vessel, the Lupitania, sailed around the American coast towards the Columbia River. Even before January the 3rd, 1881, the crew had a pretty rough go of things. For example, first mate, B.H. Raven, had taken command after the captain was lost early in the journey. Anyhow, the winds pushed the ship too close to the coastline, and thanks to the fog, the crew could not see the nearly finished lighthouse. Workers on the rock tried to signal the ship, but the Lupitania disappeared into the fog. The following day, 12 of the bodies of the crew were found on the shore. Four men were never found, and oddly, the only survivor of this crash was the crew's pet dog. Despite the horrific events on January the 3rd, construction was quickly completed. The Tillamook Rock Lighthouse was officially lit for the first time on January the 21st, 1881. Initially, four lighthouse keepers were hired to tend to the operations, and it was no picnic. The area continued to be hit with harsh and destructive storms. The lighthouse's exterior was frequently damaged, with the interior often flooded. Keepers couldn't even call for help as the telephone wire installed in 1897 was quickly destroyed in a storm. Newer lines eventually replaced it, but were also subject to storm damage. One particularly nasty storm on October the 21st, 1934, left Terrible Tilly with so much internal and external damage that lighthouse keeper Henry Jenkins could not communicate with the mainland. So in his desperation, he modified the remains of the damaged technology to create a makeshift radio to alert others of his and the building's condition. The damages from this storm cost the American government $12,000 and took four months to repair. And in the decades to follow, the story goes on like this, to the point that various tragedies and destructions surrounding Terrible Tilly spread rumors of the supernatural. And although taken with a massive grain of salt in the historical context, the lighthouse is nearly impossible to reach without a helicopter and is very dangerous by boat. So folklore and mystery are inevitable and ongoing. Locals started to claim sightings of ghosts on the rock at the turn of the 20th century and continued at the turn of the 21st. Let us indulge this notion for a moment. These urban legends, often stemming from the tragic deaths of keepers throughout the years, have been frequently publicized in books such as Oregon's Ghosts and Monsters, written in 1983 by Mike Helm. This book alleges that Tillamook Rock was infamous to the indigenous population before it was ever a lighthouse. On top of the stormy weather, these rumors and legends have curated an intimidating reputation for terrible Tilly, perhaps creating a sinister appearance. Legends aside, one thing we can all certainly agree on 
is that the lighthouse is an epic example of urban decay. Furthermore, the reality of its current use might be even creepier than ghost stories. Weather conditions made worse by local wildfire caused rapid deterioration of the lighthouse, to the point that the American government determined that the damage was too much and that they no longer wanted to fund it. So Terrible Tilly was resold to various private buyers until it wound up in the hands of the newly formed Eternity at Sea, who decided to convert the building into a columbarium. In other words, a storage facility for urns. Unfortunately for Eternity at Sea, missteps and misuse of the urns caused the Oregon Mortuary and Cemetery Board to revoke their license in 1999. So despite no longer being able to function at this capacity, the group continued to own the property for another 20 years. Much like the American government 65 years before, the upkeep of Terrible Tilly became too much for Eternity at Sea to handle. By 2022, they formally announced that the lighthouse was once again for sale. However, this was not the shareholders' first attempt to unload the property. Despite the decay, brave volunteers have made many trips over the years to attempt to clean up Terrible Tilly's walls. In March of 2023, a few months after Eternity at Sea announced their plans to sell the lighthouse, five individuals once again braved their way to the rock to make repairs. The journey landing on Terrible Tilly ran smoothly as the air was so tame that the Robinson R-66 helicopter could land quickly. Four men and one woman volunteer spent three days patching up the landmark. This trip cost Eternity at Sea shareholder Mimi Morissette $25,000 in total. Morissette shared that she would need to invest millions of dollars in replacing the infrastructure before the lighthouse could ever be sold. Along with the dedicated volunteers, Morissette, the largest shareholder of Tillamunk Rock, believes that the building's only possible use is as a columbarium, since the lighthouse will continue to deteriorate and break down, along with the fact that it's physically inaccessible during certain parts of the year, so becoming a tourist destination for private or public use is just impossible. Storing urns here, on the other hand, is one of the few business opportunities for the property as the dead are unaffected by harsh environmental conditions. Despite the dangers and the ghost rumors, not everyone perceives Terrible Tilly as an eyesore. To the contrary, the lighthouse has a sentimental place in the hearts of many locals. The 2023 volunteers and shareholder Morissette spoke of the place fondly, personifying the structure and speaking about it with endearment. Tillamunk Rock Lighthouse is off limits. The shareholders protect the property, requiring consent before anyone can visit. In fact, the lighthouse has protections as a part of the Oregon Islands National Wildlife Refuge. Without the shareholders' approval, trespassers can be charged with a felony. In addition to these protections, Terrible Tilly has been classified on the National Register of Historic Places since 1981. In the application for the National Register, the structure was described as, quote, Oregon's only offshore lighthouse, and a lighthouse with strong notoriety. This close admiration of locals and shareholders sharply contrasts the general public's view of Terrible Tilly. Rather than a scary and supposedly haunted eyesore, Tillamunk Rock Lighthouse is a landmark of the West Coast and a sentimental monument for most. And we'll leave it there for today, but special thanks to our channel members for making this episode possible. To find out how you can join our community, click the join button or the link in the description. Until next time, this is Ryan Sokash, signing off.